Hey everyone, today I'm going to be walking through my EV charging station installation process as well as things that you want to be keeping in mind if you're looking to install an EV charging station at your home. My install was actually fairly complex due to the location of my breaker box compared to my garage or where I'm going to be charging my vehicle. So hopefully my experience will be helpful for you if you are looking to install an EV charging station. And side note, I am not an electrician, so I did work with a licensed electrician to do this install at my home. I do a lot of handiwork, but I do not mess with high voltage electricity and unless you're licensed, probably neither should you. Things that you'll want to have in mind right off the bat if you're looking to install a charging station is that you'll want to know what size of breaker you're going to be able to achieve, where your location is that you're actually going to be installing the station, what type of charging station you're going to be going with and the cable length if that might be a concern, as well as the conduit routing path if that's going to be needed. And as you'll see in my installation, I needed a pretty wild conduit routing path and there were multiple layers of drywall that needed to be drilled through and routed through for me to get my clean looking charging station in my garage. Because I was doing this pretty complex home install, I was really looking to get the best charging speed that I could reasonably get and that most vehicles support right now. So that means getting a 60 amp breaker. And from that 60 amp breaker, you're able to get a just under 12 kilowatt uh, 48 amp charging speed on that 60 amp circuit. So these are the specs that you'd be looking for just to make sure that your car can support them. Uh, most modern EVs do support level two charging. So at home level two charging of just up to around 12 kilowatts, 48 amps. However, there are some like the standard range model three that actually don't support up to the 48 amps. So if you have one of those cars, you might not be able to take full advantage of the charging station speed that you install in your home. That's something to keep in mind. I am also installing on the back wall of my garage. So it has to be able to reach both cars if there are two parked in there and pretty much wherever uh, the charging ports on those cars might be at any time. So that one back wall charging cord has to just be long enough for me to reach pretty much any spot in my garage. The reason that my installation is just so complex and annoying is that I needed conduit routed from the opposite side of my house, uh, which made installation just really tricky. The electricians actually said that this was the most complex job that they've done because of just how inconvenient the location of my panel is. I'll walk through what that actually looks like on the outside, but they had to bend it a whole bunch of times on the outside. They had to drill under some stairs and behind the drywall up and over a closet that I have also under some stairs. So pretty crazy stuff. And the charger that I will be using is one that Autel sent out for me to check out. It is the Autel Maxi charger, and this is able to handle that 48 amp charging speed. It actually says it can go up to 50 amps, but uh, none of the vehicles that I'll, I'll be charging are able to take advantage of 50 amps, but this also does have a 25 foot cable, which will be able to reach everywhere in my garage like I need it to. I got the hardwired version, but they actually make similar types of charging stations for NEMA 1450 and other types of outlets as well. The links to these EV charging stations are in the description down below. And notably, I am going with a charger that does not use the Tesla standard or the North America standard as they call it now. Uh, and I'll explain why in a little bit. One thing to note about the charging station that you select is what type of features and functionalities you want it to have. So this one actually has a system where you can open it up to public use. So if you install it outside and it is you know, rated for outdoor installation, uh, you could theoretically open it up to charging and get paid for people using your charger publicly as if it were like an L2 public charger. This one has an RFID reader, so you can also facilitate those sort of access control. Um, but just figure out what you're going to be needing for most people in their garage. Uh, they're probably just going to be using private charging, so you don't necessarily need the most feature packed charger you can find, but just make sure it's going to have enough functionality for your lifestyle. I moved into this house a little bit over a year ago, and I've been charging using a level one, a 120 volt outlet in my garage. And because I do rarely drive over 30 miles in a day, I was able to get by, like it was livable for me. But taking 60 hours to potentially charge the battery to full was obviously not ideal when I need to charge a lot on a weekend uh, or do any sort of road trip or just uh, charge overnight if I drive more than 30 miles. Like it would, it would take more than 24 hours often for me to charge after getting home. And there were a handful of times where if I do a lot of driving, I just need to drive to a supercharger to top off because my home charger wasn't fast enough. But even with that, as an EV owner of two years, I find charging to just be much more convenient generally than going to a gas station. When thinking about how this works compared to a gas car, it's like, imagine if you had to bring your cell phone or your laptop to a physical store or location just outside of your home every time you wanted to charge it and use it. Even if it was way faster to recharge or refuel your cell phone or laptop, uh, like it took say just 10 seconds and you could use it for three days before refueling again, it would just be so annoying to have to go somewhere physically and deal with it. 
Whereas cell phones are fairly convenient because you just charge them overnight and you have them ready to go every single day. So because charging my EV at home, even with the super slow charging speed was more convenient than gas, at this point with a high speed charger, I will never have to think about it unless I am going on a road trip and that's what the supercharger network is for. Another reason that it became time where I really needed to install level two charging is that we are actually looking to get a Chevy Bolt as our second electric vehicle. And with two electric vehicles, we would have to charge at reduced level one charging speeds, and that just was not gonna cut it, especially when that Bolt is gonna be needing to commute 30 miles every single day. The Autel Maxi charger that I'm gonna be using does include that non-Tesla, the standard J1772 port. Uh, as I said, I did want this because one, I'm gonna have two electric vehicles, one of them's gonna be a Tesla, but the other is not gonna be a Tesla. And if I do continue having issues with my Tesla and say, for whatever reason, want to get a non-Tesla electric vehicle, that's just gonna be one less thing that I'll have to worry about then. Also, Teslas, even though they don't include the mobile connector, still do include this J1772 adapter. So it makes it easy enough to charge using the standard adapter. So if I ever end up switching my daily driver to a non-Tesla electric vehicle, that'll just be one less thing that I have to worry about. The charger that I'm using has a 25 foot cable, which works great for me in my garage because this allows me to reach any spot in the garage regardless of the orientation of the parked cars. So even though it is a little bit unwieldy to have this much cable, it, it's worth it for me because I'm gonna be charging multiple cars with it. In the future, I would like to install some sort of ceiling mounted cable management system with like retractable pulleys so I can just you know, swing over the cable, plug it in, and then when I don't need it anymore, just unplug it and it'll kind of retract back toward the ceiling. One other thing about the charger that you'll need to consider is the connectivity. If your garage has Wi-Fi, a pretty large amount of charging stations will work for you, but if you only have a wired connection or no connectivity at all, uh, you'll have to do a little bit more digging. This Autel charger has Wi-Fi, Ethernet, as well as Bluetooth, so you have a lot of choices on how you'd like to interface with the station, and if you don't have Wi-Fi or Ethernet in your garage, you can still communicate with it and and push firmware updates uh, through Bluetooth using your phone. I'd suggest mapping out where your charger is gonna live and which charger you'd like to install. So when it comes time to get quotes from electricians, you know accurately or you know roughly accurately what type of job that those electricians are gonna be needing to do. I reached out to a few installers and had a few come to my house to check out the job. Uh, because of how far away my breaker box is from my garage, I was gonna need a lot of materials and the installation itself was gonna be pretty tough. Ultimately, I did end up using Qmerit to coordinate my installation as it is the installation service that Autel recommended and Qmerit does actually uh, guarantee quality for their installation of up to a year. They also work with the installers to make sure that your regulatory stuff is all up to date. So if you live in a state or a county that requires permitting, uh, they will make sure that your installers are kind of the ones managing that permitting process as well. So there was a lot of just stuff that I didn't have to worry about. The QMer portal was actually kind of interesting. So you go through their online process where you take pictures of your breaker box, your garage, the exterior of the house, and then you take this quiz about your typical electricity usage at your home to do some load estimations. And soon after that, I got an email from QMerit with a quote and they found a licensed electrician in my area to complete the job uh, when I accepted the quote amount. So I had already mapped out how I expected the conduit to be routed and I expressed this to the installers on the day of the job. They definitely said it was gonna be a tough job to pull off, but it did work out well. We had to route the conduit from below the breaker box, under this sort of wall, then up the corner, around another corner, uh, do another bend, and then down, where then we drilled into my house under a set of stairs. On the other side of that set of stairs, there is a closet and beneath the drywall in that closet, they then pulled it up and around, uh, repatched that drywall in that closet. And there's like a half foot gap on the left wall of this closet where it actually works out to be that back face of my garage. So they were able to install it in the place that I wanted them to, uh, but it was a very complicated job and just required a lot of material and time. Uh, and I actually did end up doing the dry work patching myself. But after I did the patching, the install was complete and it works great. It's worth noting that most people will have a much easier install than mine. Uh, mine was complex just because of the location, but a lot of people will have their breaker box share a wall with their garage. And in that case, you can either run the conduit on the inside of your garage to whichever location you'd like and they can install the charger there, or you can run the conduit just a little bit on the outside of your garage 
or just stick the charger on the same wall that uh, the breaker box is on and your cost of materials and labor would probably be under a thousand dollars because that'd be a much much easier install. So now that I have this charger and station installed I have more than 10 times the speed of my charging at home. Every morning no matter how much I drove the day before I will have a full battery or full as to whatever I set the charge limit at. Like, I, I don't have to worry about it. After going through this process of a particularly complex install, I thought it would be helpful if I just mapped out all the things that I had thought about. So what charging speed are you actually looking for? How difficult is the install gonna be? Is it gonna be, you know, a lot of conduit running or does it share a wall? What charger you wanna use? Is that charger gonna have a long enough cable where it can uh, get to every part of the garage where you might be parking an electric vehicle? and will that charger work with your home connectivity as well as the vehicles inside your garage. The installation, even though it was pretty complex, only took about five hours and the installers actually said that the Autel charger uh, was really easy to work with because there's just a lot of space in the box and that they could uh, manipulate the cabling inside pretty easily. The charging speed is now fast enough that with two electric vehicles and this one station, we're never gonna have to worry about not having enough charge to get to wherever we have to go. It, we're gonna have essentially a full charge for each vehicle every single day. Because before, if I, for some reason, had to charge from zero to 100 with my Tesla, it would take over 60 hours. And now it'll take probably around 10. And most of the time I'm not driving 300 miles in a day. So I'm charging from like 50% to 80%. And that's only been taking like two and a half hours. With that type of charging speed, it really frees you up to make any amount of trips that you need to make in a day and you just always have enough charge the next day. I hope I was able to map out some helpful things for you to think about. I hope my experience was interesting and maybe you see a little bit of your own project in mine. Thank you so much Autel for sending out their station for me to check out and I'll see you again real soon.